This will serve as your pre-recorded discussion about lesson 3 which is called as which is entitled characteristics of life. So we've already discussed lesson 1 and 2 so let's proceed and continue our discussion. Let's start from the definition or from defining the word or the term life. So life is very broad term and it has no exact description. Uh, you cannot define uh, life in an easy way. Why? Because there are a lot of explanation in defining what is life. But the easiest way on describing, uh, describing it or giving its description by its important characteristics of living things. So eventually, when we say, eventually by, by knowing the following important characteristic, you can state that life is focused on the physical entities and biological process. When we say physical entity, entities, it describes the appearance of living organism um, uh, outside and also it, it describes the biological processes. When we say biological processes, it includes the different reaction inside your body. So that's why it started or that's why it's, it explains that life can be described or can easily be described by the means of its important characteristics. So what are those important characteristics? Let's start by the term metabolism. Metabolism is a term that is used to describe all chemical reaction involving uh, maintaining the living state of the cells and organs organism so meaning to say when we say metabolism it is the main function of, of meta metabolism is to keep the cell um, work and grow grow so that was the metabolism uh, there are two develop uh, there are two categories of metabolism we have catabolism and anabolism when we say catabolism it is the breakdown of molecules to obtain energy when we say breakdown of molecules, where can we when where can we find that breakdown of molecules? Of course, in the digestion of our food. Once we digested our food, we can eventually obtain energy. So from that um, from the digestion, makakakuha na tayo ng energy doon. So ano anong nangyayari sa digestion? Of course, we can uh, we can break down the molecules, the nutrients that we we can actually uh, that we been eating so from those food that we actually eating um it can break down and can leads uh break down the nutrients that the food uh, have and uh, produce an energy so that process is called catabolism comparing it to the second category which is anabolism anabolism now is the synthesis of the compounds needed by the cell so anabolism focuses on the growing and development of the cell so that was the differences between catabolism and anabolism since we've already mentioned what is energy or since we've already mentioned energy let's state the important important of energy processing so the important of energy the very first important sorry the very first important and uh, of energy is for us to do a meta uh, to do an metabolic met metabolic activities of course in our daily life we can we can ha uh, we can have um or in our daily life lahat naman tayo di ba started our day uh, in a work work as a work uh like for example me that i'm working i will be starting my day uh giving you a lesson how about you guys as a student you're starting your day um listening you're starting your day listening answering some assessment so how can you do that if there is so-called uh no energy so that's why energy is very important for us to do a metabolic activities so where can we found a energy of course some of organism capture energy from the sun converted it to certain chemical reaction that would leads to food and that is called photosynthesis while others use chemical energy and in a molecules then converted into a certain food and that is called cellular respiration so there are two process how can we get energy from first one from the process photosynthesis where you can get or you can capture energy from the sun converted in to a chemical energy that leads by the food and uh, next one is the others use chemical reaction or chemical energy in the molecules that take in as a food so there are two processes we have cellular respiration and photosynthesis so uh so that was the 
the first uh, important characteristic characteristic of living things which is metabolism so let's discuss now gr the second one which is growth and development so let's uh, give the differences between development and a growth development is the progression from earlier to later stages in maturation meaning to say when we say development so meaning to say when we say development it is actually the process that creates growth progress positive change or the addition of your physical appearance or your environmental situation so meaning not only physically in yourself but also development of course in your environment so meaning in your society so that is the the definition of development it is a progression from earlier to later stages in maturation or um, le uh, to be explained it further it is a process created from the growth progress and changes or the addition of uh, your physical appearance and additional also in the environment or in the society that you are interacting so that was the meaning of development it, it is very contrast to the other term which is growth because growth is the ir irreversible change in size of cell and plant organs due to both cell division and enlargement so meaning to say when we say growth it is actually a term that this stage is a condition a stage or condition that eventually increasing so that was um growth so meaning to say if the when we say increasing meaning to say when we say growth uh, eventually the organism or uh, the situation is developing or maturing so that would uh, that is the meaning of this uh, statement that it's eventually the change of the size of the cell meaning to say the organism now is being developing or being what being increasing that's why it said it is uh, it is uh, from the changes in the size of the cell so that was the growth that was the definition of the growth and development again development is from the uh, progression of the earlier to later stage in maturation while growth it is uh, the condition or a stage which is being increasing all of your uh, all of the the including your your body parts your appearance physically is increasing that that is the definition for growth okay so another uh, another type of characteristics in living a uh, thing is responding to their in environment of course um living organism or one of the explanation or the division of the characteristic in living organism is about the responding to re environment how the living organism now interact to the environment um not only by the interaction but also but, but also with the adaptation of the living organism it said that the ad adaptation refers to the process of becoming adjusted to an environment yes adaptation may include structural physiological or behavioral traits that improve an organism likelihood of survival and thus reproduction so yan yan ang sinasabi ko that that the characteristic or or one of the characteristics of life is um, responding to the environment because that is the very the one help one also or uh, it is a help to the person or to the organism to be grow or to develop why because they they can get or they can get some or they can adopt some um, um characteristics in the environment or they can adopt some of it from communicating or from interacting with the others so that's that is the meaning about that is the process called responding to the environment next we have irritability irritability is to respond to the changes in their uh, environment so meaning to say while you are adapting you are also responding so not only na na pagdating mo sa environment Doon ka lang, you are adapting and adapting. But also, not only sinasabi natin na by adapting it, kailangan ding gawin mo yon. So by that, you can have this process so-called irritability. You are now responding to the adaptation that you have in the certain environment. Okay? Naintindihan? So that's it. Next to that, we have reproduction. 
Reproduction is the biological process which new individual organism or offspring are produced. From their parents, reproduction is fundamental feature of all known life. Each individual organism exists as the result of reproduction. So meaning to say, uh, in other words, reproduction means to reproduce. So all of us, all of the living organism, um, go to the process so-called uh, reproduction before we can have a living organism my reproduction pa munang nangyayari so that reproduction not only so that reproduction would leads to the parents of the organism parents of the offspring of course the parents is divided into women and men offspring so by that uh, uh, women and men so by that they can give a certain offspring and that uh, that process is called reproduction okay so if you have a question clarification you can leave your questions in our gc so um aside from reproduction we also have the very the last one maintain homeostasis when we say homeostasis it is any self-regulating process by which biological system tend to maintain stability while adjusting to um, conditions that are optional for survival. Okay, so omeos literally, homeostasis is defined as a steady state. So meaning to say, homeostasis is refers to the capacity uh, of the body to maintain the stability of the diverse internal and external variables. So meaning to say, it is all about stability of the organism. So of course, um, by by going to the four, uh, to the five characteristics of living organ, uh, living things, we can eventually know that we are stable. If you have the so-called metabolism process called metabolism, right, growth and development, responding to the environment, irritability, reproduction, of course, you will lead to homeostasis or maintain your stability as an organism so that was the six characteristics of life okay so as you can see this is this is actually the explanation by this this illustration you can see the women and men uh, produces egg cell and sperm and that uh, this is uh, actually a example of reproduction Okay, then uh, by the, the egg cell and the sperm cell, it can produce a fertilization, at, uh, which is called as a zygote. So by that, it can produce embryo. So once, once, the, offs, uh, once the man and woman produces it, it's for, or the man, a woman lang pala, sorry, the woman produces its fertilization, it, it is now leads to embryo or an offspring. Okay. Malilids na siya ng bagong living organism. Okay, so that was the six characteristics of life. Okay, to sum up everything, let me, let me read this one. All living things detect changes in their environment and respond to them. Yun na nga. That's, uh, that is why I, I'm, I'm actually explaining to you guys that... Um, not only by responding or not only by adapting the certain situation in the environment, but also you will respond to the certain adapt. Hindi lang kasi adapt ka ng adapt, then walang reaction. Meron, dapat meron, and that reaction will, is called responding. You will now responding to the needs of the environment. Next, all living things grow and develop. Yes, all living things grow, all living things develop. Okay, next, all living things are capable of reproduction, the process by which living things give rise to offspring. Yes, all of us or all of the living organism has a capability to produce another living organism. By the means of what? By the means of process called reproduction production okay so next to that all living things have complex chemistry yes oh. and, and lastly all forms of life are built of cell a cell is the basic unit of structure and function of living uh, living things so let's uh, let's make me uh, uh, let me explain further the complex chemistry when we say complex chemistry all living organism has a chemical and molecular level so meaning to say there is a, uh, there are a lot of 
compounds or there are a lot of elements inside our body that is uh, being work or being processed. So I will be discussing to you later on the chemical and molecular level inside our body. That's why there is so-called complex chemistry, meaning to say um, in our inside our body there is a chemistry or there is a process called chemistry inside our body okay not only biological process but also complex chemistry okay let's proceed to the last one all form of life are built of cell a cell is the basic unit of the structure and function of the living things yes of course all of us started with the cell cell that is actually combined to another cell to a pre-existing cell that is why we have of trillions of cells inside your body so one of the components or one of the 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 process in our inside our body is called cell you know cell is the foundation of the organism when we say foundation it is the beginning of an organism okay so uh so that was the characteristics of life so let's proceed now to the to another topic for this afternoon which is levels of organization okay let's proceed now to our next topic which is levels of organization levels of organization is is actually a organization that stated on how the organism can be created so what is the the beginning or the started of the level it is the okay so before we will go on to the to the starting point of the levels of organization let's uh define first what is uh this organization or what is the importance of the this level so the human body is organized into structural and functional levels of increasing complexity each higher level incorporates the structure and function of the previous level so that is why i've said that levels of organization is very important why because it is actually the the process that can explain on how the organism can be created okay so let's proceed so this is actually the random uh random what they call this the illustration of levels of organization we have cells but meron pang kulang dito the very first one the chemical and molecular level then the cellular level then the tissue level organ level uh, organ system level then the organism okay let's div uh, th let's discuss that one by one okay so now this is actually the representation on the how can we uh know the first level to the sixth level of it okay from the first one we have the chemical or molecular level so the the starting point of having an organism is from the chemical and molecular level second would be the cellular level third would be the tissue level fourth will be the organ level fifth will be fifth will be the organ system sorry with this because uh, this is uh, actually a typo error for the powerpoint fifth will be the organ system or the organ system then six would be the organism level okay again first would be the chemical and molecular level six uh, for second would be the cellular level third would be the tissue level fourth will be the organ level fifth will be the organism uh, organ system level and six will be the organism level okay so let's discuss it further first one is chemical or molecular level of course our body is inside our body uh, composed of a different uh, molecular level or chemicals uh in in our body so what are those we have oxygen carbon hydrogen nitrogen calcium phosphorus potassium sulfur sodium chlorine magnesium and others we also have water protein um minerals carbohydrates and fat so by that chemicals inside your body it it's signified or it is classified at as its percentage okay as you can see um our body is composed of oxygen in 65 percent which is 65 percent carbon 80 18 percent hydrogen 9.5 percent nitrogen 3.2 percent calcium 1.5 percent phosphorus 1.2 potassium 0.4 sulfur 0.2 sodium 0.2 
chlorine 0.2 magnesium 0.1 others is one percent um water and protein for the water 62 percent protein 16 percent and we also have minerals six percent carbohydrates one percent and fat 16 percent so that is the classification of chemicals inside your body so please be familiarized with that percentage because that is actually included in your examination so uh um, ilan ba yung percentage ng oxygen inside your body? So that is very important. That is actually um, part of your field to know the percentage of different chemicals inside your body. That is why uh, I've said in the first characteristics of life that um, all living organism has a complicity, uh, compl complex chemistry. So this explains the complex chemistry. Um, that is why it said that in the process inside our body, um, chemistry is involved because of this okay so let's proceed to another slide the chemicals that make up body may be divided into two cat major categories of course there are two major categories of chemical or molecular level we have inorganic chemicals and organic chemicals inorganic chemicals are usually simple molecules made of one or more or two elements other than carbon so meaning to say it is actually the all elements except for carbon inorganic chemicals is not um not involving with the element called carbon okay well organic chemicals are often very complex and always contain the elements elements carbon and hydrogen so meaning to say the differences between the two chemicals inorganic has no carbon at all while organic has a carbon okay let me give you example for the example of it we have inorganic chemicals water uh, oxygen and minerals while organic chemicals produces the biomolecules inside your body or the macromolecules inside your body we have carbohydrates lipids nucleic acid and protein so that was the the actually the the examples of the two uh, inorganic chemicals as you can see there is no carbon in the example of inorganic it is actually water oxygen and minerals while organic chemistry uh, organic chemical sorry organic chemicals produces a carbon because of the biomolecules that is actually carbohydrate lipids nucleic acid and protein all of that has consists of ca carbon so that is the differences between the two okay let's move on let's move forward so again inulit lang so this is the examples of it let's move forward for another levels of organization which is cellular level so we all know that cell is the basic unit of life so the main function there are different okay the main function of cell is actually uh, it has a different types of human cells though they all have s certain similarities but there are they uh, they are different okay always remember that cell is not similar although meron there are certain ta certain function na nagkaka similar si cell but eventually all of a cell is unique and different next one each type of cell is made of chemicals and carries out specific chemical reaction yes um as i've said um cell is made uh cell is made up of chemicals uh, kanina na explain na and it's carry out a specific chemical reaction if of course because when we say um chemicals it eventually undergo with the process called reaction so that is why cell is come from pre-existing cell because from the pre-existing cell the cell can reproduce in the trillions or it, it can reproduce doubled or tripled so that is why cell is come from pre-existent cells so another the statement the human body is composed of trillions of cells all with their own specialized function that is why i've said that um cell is unique and different because all of the cell or uh, one each of the cell has its specialized function okay so kaya nga hindi natin pwedeng i sabihin na similar lang ang each cell kasi lahat sila unique lahat sila may kanya-kanyang function okay we will be discussing that furthermore in the uh, in the topic which is cell okay let's proceed tissues 
So tissues is actually from the group of cell with a similar structure and function. So eventually, if a, the combination of cell or the group of cells that leads with a similar structure and function, that is called tissue. We have also four um, types of tissues uh, and their function. We have, let me zoom this one, we have epithelial tissue. Epithelial tissue refers or uh, functions as a covers body, surface, and lines internal organs. When we say covers body, um, eventually epithelial tissue actually the one who is who is uh, focuses on covering the body surface or the lines of the organs um, uh, while connective tissue is for the support and protection and while nervous when we say nervous nerves information it is actually uh, function as the sending and receiving information about stimuli and lastly muscles it is for the movement so that was the tissue the four types of tissues and their function please always remember the key word of it if it covers the body covers the surface of the body connective support and protect nervous send and re reserve uh, receives information from the stimuli muscle for movement okay so that was the the key point for the four types of tissue so let's move forward okay so this is actually the representation or the illustration of connective tissue epithelial muscle tissue and nervous tissue next we have organ of course an organ is a group of tissue precisely arranged so as to accomplish specific function so a uh, organ is from the group of tissue once the group of tissue can be arranged and um uh, and has a specific function it can it can be created as a organ so what are those organ of course the parts of your body like for example lungs is an organ heart is an organ brain is an organ um kidney liver intestine small intestine stomach and so on and so forth is an organ so meaning to say parts of your body is called as a organ okay let's proceed to another another so this is one of a uh, actually new organ that found in our body it is called as tuberal glands tuberal glands can be found in uh, the nasal uh, in the nasal part of our body so tuberal gland is can be found in our nasal through the esophagus so that is the new found organ inside our body tuberial glands okay so now let's proceed to the fifth one which is organ system so organ system is a group of organs naman that all contribute to the particular function of course each part of our body has organ system meaning to say organ is desig uh, designated or designed to a certain system meaning to say hindi lang masasabi natin that heart is an organ heart is an organ that is in the cardiovascular system um, skin is an organ that is in the integumentary system so meaning to say all the parts that has a, the same function is e organ system is located to a certain organ system we have skin hair for protection that is located to our integumentary system so this would be the least sorry na, 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 natatabunan pala ko this would be the least of the 11 organ system we have integumentary system nervous skeleton endocrine muscular cardiovascular urinary lymphatic uh, um, respiratory digestive and reproductive okay let's discuss it one by one okay so this is actually the representation of the each system let's discuss it first the integumentary system so as i've said all of the body parts that has the same function in uh, includes in a certain system what are those body parts that has the same function uh, in the integumentary system, we have major organs. We have skin, hair, sweat glands, and nails. So what are the functions? We have the, to protect against environmental hazard. Of course, skin is protection, right? Hair is protection. Sweat glands is protection. Nails also is for protection. 
Aside from protection, it helps to regulate body temperature. Yes, as I've said, your skin adopts the body uh, adopts tem temperature, either cold or hot. The skin is the one to protect you to determine if the if the season is hot or if the season is cold. Okay, so that is the rule of the skin. Okay, aside from helps regulates body temperature, it also helps to provide sensory information. Yes. So one of the sensory information that we have is sense of touch. Skin is the one that is actually can feel the certain object. So that is why skin or that is why integumentary can provide also a sensory information okay so that was the integumentary system next would be the nervous system if the integumentary system is focusing focusing on the on the protection outside or surface the nervous system is uh, for the function of it directs immediate responses to stimuli yes because it is nervous system coordinates or moderates activities of other organ system and lastly, provides and interprets sensory information about external conditions. So what are those um, parts or major organs that leads with this function? Of course, we have brain, spinal cord, peripheral nerves, and sense organs. So that was the main function of nervous system. So I will be, I will, actually, I will be discussing it deeply by the system A. We've, or, we will uh, discuss also the system one by one. Okay? Let's proceed to another. We have skeletal system. Skeletal system is a major organ, uh, has a major organ like bones, cartilage, associated ligaments, and bone marrow. So the major function of skeletal system provides support and protection for that other tissue, stores calcium and other minerals, and form uh, forms blood cells. So skeletal, as I've said, skeletal is your foundation. Why? the 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 organ the organism cannot be uh, or uh, the organ system cannot uh, be stand without the skeletal system okay so skeletal system is very important because it is the foundation of the organism um it is for the support of the the organism to to be to stand while if the organism will be moved that is the function of the another system which is muscular that later on we will be discussed. So let's move on to another system. We have endocrine system. Endocrine system is actually directs, the main function of it is directs long-term changes in the activities of other organ system, adjusts metabolic activity and energy used by the body, controls many structural and functional changes during development. So meaning growth and development is uh, involved in the endocrine system. So there are major organs for the endocrine system. We have pituitary gland, thyroid gland, pancreas, adrenal gland, gonads or the testes and ovaries, endocrine tissues in other system. Okay. Okay, so it it's actually includes testes and ovaries for the hormonal uh, activities. That is why um, endocrine is involved also in hormonal uh, uh, hormonal activity. That is why testes and ovaries is actually con uh, included by the means of uh, called gonads in the endocrine system. So that's it. That is the the endocrine system. Let's move forward to another slide. We also have, uh, like I've said, if skeletal uh, if skeletal system is for support, meaning to say it is the foundation support for in your body. Uh, the muscular system, naman, is for the movement. That is why you can move. That is why you can run. You can walk. You can sit. You can eat, or you can do your work uh, easily because of the muscular system. Because it provides movement. So the major organs for muscular system, we have skeletal muscles and associated tendons and uh, okay, associated tendons and tendinous sheets. So that was the muscular system. The main function again of it is provides movement, provides protection and support for other tissues, generates heat that maintains body temperature. So uh, 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 so I've said. Skeletal system and muscular system is connected to each other. Why? Skeletal system is for the foundation of the your body. Meaning to say, if you want, uh, the body can 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 actually stand because of the skeletal system. But with the movement 
of the body of each of your body like for example your hand your foot your 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 actually your your body your whole body is for your muscular system okay movement kaya ka nakakatakbo kaya ka nakakagawa ng mga bagay na ginagawa mo araw-araw because of your muscular system okay kapag wala hindi naman na mangyayaring walang muscular system ang tao kasi nga organism composed of this 11 system so that's why you can move you can run you can do your thing every day because of this system okay let's proceed to another slide the cardiovascular system okay cardiovascular system main function distribute blood cells water and dissolved materials including nutrients waste products oxygen and carbon dioxide distribute heat and assist in control of the body temperature of course when the car uh, cardiovascular system um the major organs of it we have heart blood and vessels and also heart is can be a muscle why heart is an organ uh, heart is a muscle or what muscles that is particular in in a heart is called cardiac muscle okay so that is the muscle that can be found in our heart okay so if you will you will be asking me mom wha what muscle is uh, is in our heart that is called cardiac muscle okay so let's proceed to another slide so always remember that in cardiovascular it is a system that di distribute blood cells so meaning to say whether when there is a blood cells there is also called as a uh, blood vessels so that is for the circulation or for the distributing of the blood cells not only the blood cells but also the water and dissolve other materials including nutrients waste products oxygen and carbon dioxide okay so let's proceed to another slide we have lymphatic system for lymphatic system of course it defends against infection and disease returns tissue fluids to bloodstream so the major organ for lymphatic system we have spleen thymus lymphatic vessels lymph nodes and tonsils so later part i uh, said we will be actually defining those or giving the description of those major organ kapag nasa system na tayo kasi sabi ko nga um this would be the representation lang nire-represent ko lang sa inyo ang 11 organ system but the description of each organ or each part i will be discussing it if we will now uh discuss the system the one by one system Okay, I will be giving you the description and I will be giving you the location of each part. Okay, so let's proceed to another slide. We have the urinary system. Urinary system, the main function of this system is to excrete waste products from the blood, controls water balance by regulating volume of urine pr produced, stores urine prior to voluntary elimination, and regulates blood ion concentration and pH or the potential hydrogen inside our body. So the major organs that we can found in urinary system, of course, since it is uh, the function of it is to excrete waste, we we now we have now ureters and uretra we also have kidney and urinary bladder okay so that was the major organs for urinary system next system would be the respiratory system respiratory system is delivers air to alveoli sites alve alveoli means uh, the sites in the lungs where gas exchange occurs provides oxygen to bloodstream removes carbon dioxide from the bloodstream and produces sounds for communications so that is why uh, that is the function of respiratory system so it delivers air or adopts air meaning to say the organs of it is nasal cavities sinuses larynx trachea bronchi lungs and alveoli so that was the major organ for respiratory system so let's proceed to another system again for another system we have digestive system digestive system the main function of it is to process and digest food absorb and conserve water absorb nutrients ions waters uh, and the breakdown products of dietary sugars proteins and fats stores energy reserves so digestion comes from 
or first comes from when you put your food on your mouth then start to chew so when you are chewing you are actually having the process which is called digestion nagda-digest niya yung pagkain mo or the the food itself will break down into molecules or on the different nutrients once you chew your food so meaning to say mouth itself sa mouth pa lang mouth pa lang mouth pa lang very slang na si ma'am okay sa mouth pa lang nagsta-start na ang digestion okay so what are the, those major organs that we can found in the digestive system we have teeth tongue pharynx esophagus stomach small intestine large in intestine liver gallbladder and pancreas so that was the digestive system okay let's proceed to another slide we have the male reproductive system so this is the division of course of the reproductive system there are two division of reproductive system we have male reproductive system and female reproductive system so let's focus first for the male reproductive system the main function of it of course produces male sex cells and hormones so what is this male sex cells of course this is called as sperm so what are the major organs that produces sperm we have testes, epididymis, ductus deferens, um, seminal vesicles, prostate gland, penis, and scrotum. So that was the male reproductive system. So I will be discussing that one in our, uh, in our uh, discussion in a system. Like I've said, I will be discussing it in the division of the system. So now let's proceed. To another we have the female reproductive system for the female reproductive system the main function of it if the male produces a male sex cells of course female produces a female sex cells so female sex cells are called as a oocytes and hormones supports developing embryo from uh, conception to delivery provides milk to nourish newborn infant so the, so as you can see the main function of female reproductive is very um it's very parang mas mas madami tayong function major function kaysa sa lalaki lalaki only give you the ano the hormone uh, the 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 it's male sex cell but the embryo by the by, by the process of having an offspring ang babae ang nagbibigay niyan so that's why women is very important if there's no women there is no so called offspring diba pero kapag wala ni namang lalaki wala ding offspring so yan yung sinasabi natin na win win meaning to say uh, all of the uh, all of the, the the parts of each male and female is very important to have another living organism win 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 basis lang yan okay so let's proceed to the major organs that we have in female reproductive system we have ovaries uterine tube uterus vagina labia clitoris mammary glands so i will be discussing that one one by one in the system uh, later on in our this subject okay so any questions clarifications for our topic for this afternoon so so if you have questions and clarification i will uh please leave that uh feedback and comments in our gc or you can pm me directly so thank you very much i've reached the end of my powerpoint so this would be the end or the last uh, uh Oh, this would be the last topic for the preliminary, uh, preliminary, and this would be the last coverage uh, for your preliminary examination. So I hope that you listen to it in my YouTube channel, and please give me a feedback and comments in GC or in or by PM. So if uh, there is no more question, you can leave that in our GC. Thank you very much, and have a nice day. Stay safe, everyone. Bye.